-hmm. All right, introduce yourself quickly from which state you are and your name, that's it. Your name and from which place you are. Sir, uh, I'm not sure. Sorry, I didn't heard you. What do you say? Uh, I'm Anushka from UP. Okay. Next. Yeah, next one, a quick. Hello. Sir, this is Sarva Madhikar from Maharashtra. Okay. Next one. Yeah, next. Oh, what does that mean? Okay, okay. Okay, I've got in the Hello. Chat. Yeah, I've got it. Hello, sir. This is Manolata from AP. Yeah, I got the chat. So, uh, you all three are aware of Python? How we deal with the syntax and all those things? Sir. Everyone know? Everyone know? Just write yes or no in the chat. Write down yes or no in the chat box. I will get it there. Little bit and yes. Okay, fine. So uh, a little bit for Python. We are going to use. Anaconda. Okay, so for that you need to install all those things. Anaconda and Python. And from where you will install, I'm giving you a link. Okay. It's okay. So this is a link like where from you can get to access all the editors and the environments and from here you can download the things. Alright. So now let's start up, right? I think I guess you know a bit of Python. So let's brush up the skills. What exactly Python consists, what are there? Let's see. Okay. Get to have to get it there. Oh wait, just a second. So once you download this anaconda, you'll get something like this, okay? And 
let's have to this arithmetica where is it where is e e p e, 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 e think it's second i p correctly okay and this is the folder so this is from is zero seven twenty one oh zero seven yeah okay twenty one ten twenty it's the folder and today is the new file Okay, so today we are going to understand a bit of Python basics. So this is your DS 8 10 20. So the very first thing is about the keywords. What are keywords? Yeah, what are keywords? anything you can define its things okay I see uh, two have joined now what are their names what are your names and from where you are two people joined last one Shivani and, and uh, I couldn't see anything uh, okay one second now you can see I hope so yeah, last two people from where you are, S K A N D Skanda Murthy and Shivani Rana. Oh, they are getting the voice. Okay, fine. Hmm. Alright. So what are keywords? These are the special names that are already present in the Python and we can use this for the specific functionalities. Okay. So if we want to see all the keywords in the Python, it's just we need to write the help of the keywords to get the things and these are the keywords. False, none, true and as a certain all these things. So how many keywords are there? If you go to see the length of the help of the keywords so you'll find it to be uh, I think length is not being given ok fine so let's do one thing let's import this keyword and then find the length of keyword dot kw list that is all the list of the keywords so we have uh, I think 35 yeah 35 keywords okay so these are of use like right? here you can see like nine rows four columns one missing that is 35 easy okay Then we have topic colors identifiers. So see guys how our classes will be going on. So time limit is two hours as you can see from nine to eleven. Okay, but the fact is like we will be going through nine to ten with the uh, theories and lectures. You say a lot of things, whatever we'll be covering in the one one hour, right? The next one hour not for today from tomorrow from from tomorrow the next one hour will be for your sessions like assignments you will be getting assignments okay based on that that will be affecting also your internships right so based you will be getting assignment questions every day 
you have to solve that whatever you learned in the class uh, and those things you'll be getting up, right so uh, you will be getting assignments in the next one hour and you have to solve within that one hour right every one every day so for today you will not get today you will only having one hour session and you will be like going through all the, the things whatever we discussed today right so what are identifiers so the first two days you will be just grooming up with the python okay what are identifiers anyone okay i see someone is presenting sorry the presentation was stopped now is it okay just show the shivani from gujarat name used to identify a variable function Hmm, that is fine. Okay, function names, variable names. Still, you are not able to see anything. So, but anyone is not able to see my screen. One second, let me stop them. Is it okay now? So identifiers are the defined names that we just use to represent the variables, the classes, the functions, modules, etc. And we can define it like let's say name equals to. It is happening, and I say my identifier is equals to name. So if I if I print my name, or if I print my my I do uh, identifier, I'll get the same results. It is happening for both of the time. Why? Because that is a name variable. That is being stored. Next simple concept we have is comments. What is comments? What are comments? What are comments? Yeah, quick. Speak, don't write, just speak up quick. These are easy things. In order to explain what we are writing, in order to explain the code. Here we have assigned five to the x. Now comments can also be of two types: multi-line comments, more than one line, or single-line comment. How you have seen, right? Or 
it can be a dog string comment. string comment slash n defines a new line this is a talk string comment okay it's clear I think. that is how comment and define all right then we have various variables, assignments, operators, and all. All right, so today we'll look on some of the things. Let's go with that. Like all the basics we'll be covering today of the Python. So how we can assign variables, all the possible ways I'm giving you. First way, with giving a semicolons. Next way. Or you can even like give individually how basically we give individually okay next so there are a lot of operators can you just write the name of operators here quick how many operators you know just easy right quickly What are the operators you know? Uh, no, not like this, like arithmetic or assignment and all those. Arithmetic logical, okay. Bitwise, relational. Comparison. Comparison. Logical. Logical done. Bitwise. Bitwise done. Assignment. Assignment done. And uh, special operators. Like. Uh, like uh, identity operator. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's it. Membership operator. Uh, membership of it. Okay. Right. Starting with arithmetic operators. Okay. So how we deal with that? Let's say uh, x y have given five ten. Okay. So the very first additions. Subtraction, multiplication, division, answers, 15, minus 5, 50, and 0.5. Okay. Last one has got the different data type. We'll discuss on what is the data types. Okay. The next operators we have. So, these was clear, right? Plus, minus, multiplication. I'm just grooming up because you all know. So, just having a brush kind of thing. So, I don't need to explain anything. So, 
to see the results x divide divide by y is nothing but the integer division of 0.5 we are getting 0 x divide by y leaving the remainder as 5 okay and then the x to the power of y gives the result 9765625 okay these are the operators arithmetic operators anything left in the arithmetic section 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 Next coming to the assignment part. Okay. This, these are like x plus equals to 10. That means if x is equals to 5, then x plus equals to 10 means x equals to x plus 10 that is x equals to 5 plus 10 that is going to be 15. We are printing these two things. Uh, minus 15 first one 5 plus 10 goes as 15 next one 30 minus uh, I think it's x minus equals to there so x is 5 so okay 5 minus uh, oh sorry it was 15 15 minus 30 is equals to minus 15 right so does it goes for the multiplication divisions and all As the results, okay. Fine. So these are the things. Arithmetic done, assignment done. Next, coming up to the logical. In logical operators, what are the operators we have? And or not. And or not. Okay. Let's speak. So he said and or and not. So these three things are used at three different paces. Right. How? If I say 1 and 0, true and false. See? But these are the bitwise. Right? So we need to focus on 1 and 0. False. 1 and 1. True and true basically that means. In the four options, only in the condition when both the sides are correct, is we are going to get the result as one. Okay, same goes with or. If any other side is correct, we get the results. You can see. Uh, oh, sorry. We haven't used our. So we have three one and one zero. Next operator. Yeah. 
hey you can go with the uh, logical is done right so we can go with the bitwise we can go with the membership we can go with the uh, identities we can go with the what is that called as boolean right so in boolean what happens you go with or you can go with the comparison boolean is like with the uh, and and all discrete results you know like results which are in one and zero okay so uh, let's see uh, regarding the uh, identity and memberships so how it can be done let's say uh, i say 23 whether this leads lies in say it's true because this leads subset what you are searching is being found in the music leads okay if the substring if it matches in the keyword you'll get the answers if it not then no same if i say leads is do you know the difference between is and all is and uh, in Yes, do you know the difference between in and is? Um, is it similar to or? Similar to or? Yes, is. Is similar to no, no, no. Is it a uh, means like equal and? Yeah, equality is obviously it searches for, but on what type? Sir, it is uh, it is uh, refers to the same object. Same object. So, hmm. if I say, not here, so is this same? No, it is not same. Fine. If I say same, right? Hmm. Right. Y is x. Correct. Hmm. Okay. Correct. Hmm. Correct. So that is correct, right? All right. So is what does it goes for a membership like uh, when we say it goes with an ID function. You know what ID function was? Works as someone says it like it compares the objects, right? So it gives you the locations. So if the locations are pretty uh, similar, then we can say it's equal, right? The objects when are same. These are same. So if you say ID of X, it gives you the address, the location. If you might have done with other programming languages, you know what is location scholars. Okay. So that is the core basic what which gives as it is. Okay. Now, all right. So dealing up with the various parts, like uh, there are three kind of numbers, uh, integer, complex and float so integers are the colors like uh, 34 45 67 89 these are the integers 
right? When you talk about float, 45.76, 34.89, 0 0.05, these are the float. These are the float. Real numbers. And when we say about the integers, positive, whole numbers, right? Excluding the zero. Not including. Or you can say uh, zero, etc. It's no problem. Positive whole numbers. That's it. Next. Next we have something called as complex. 23J, 67 plus 0J, 5J, 56 minus 2J. Now what are these things? Complex. Now can you let me know what is the real part, what is the imaginary part here? The integers having j are the imaginary part. Mm -hmm. So how can I print that if I want to see the imaginary part? I am j print I um, something when I I am g. I'm sorry. I am g. Then. Suppose if I say this is equal to so imaginary. This is equal to x, y, and z. If I print x, y, and z, this. So what is the imaginary part of y? I am g of y. I am g of y like this. Yes. That is an error. You have to, you are uh, approximately correct, you can say. Uh, that is y dot, that is also not y dot img, right? That is y dot img. Yeah, you are missing a. Okay. So that is y dot img. Imaginary. For the real, what we'll do is y dot real. That's it. Very simple. And you get the results in float. If you want an integer, you can write integer. That's it. Clear? So for any complex number, you can get the complex and the float. Uh, sorry, for the uh, real and the imaginary as such. Okay? Now let's come the uh, input function. When we take, what is the uh, you can say default data type when you take any inputs. When we take any <clears throat> any inputs, what is the default data type? Mm -hmm. so object. <laughs> object. How many data types we have? Integers defined by default, it is a string. By default, it is a string, yeah, correct. So, we need to change the by default type that is a string basically. We need to change that, that's it, right? So, we can write the input uh, int float or complex kind of thing. Okay. Uh, can anyone please mute? Whose mic is on? Okay, fine, thank you. So we can just write integer float complex something like that before taking the inputs. If I'm taking marks as the input, what what should I take? Integer or float? Uh, int input. Int input. Why not float? Uh, yes, we can take even in float. Because, but uh, marks are whole number. If you want to take percentage, you can take it in float. Uh, yeah, but it is not like always marks are in numbers. Like marks can be also 45.78 something, right? 
that can be also in points sometimes so uh, or 45.0005 anything right so that can be taken in the float even marks always try to take in the float so before that what we are going to do is float Enter marks. And you see like uh, 34.6, uh, 334, you get the results. Okay. Now, so let's say this is S. And the data type of S. Yeah. Right? Fine. Okay, so get it as float. Like that. For for integer, what we are doing? X equals integer of input. Enter number. So that can be thirty five, and you can get the type of H. But what if I want to take the input in a complex? Should I write it like? complex so should i write it like this type complex Have you tried this? Complex? No? Mostly we try this float and end. How many of you have tried for complex? No one, I think. Right. There's another way evaluate. Complex, 6 is the imaginary part and 4 is the real part and that is how it's being displayed. Okay, so these are the things and the next one is random, that is a huge one basically, right. So let's say if we want a rand range kind of thing, a range of numbers, so we use Giant range, right? If we want an integer, not a range of things, we say random integer. And for an random one, we just import it like that, right? So if I say rand range of three to five, then the possible outcomes could be. 3, 5. Like if I run this, like let's say this is a for list, okay, and I say for i in a range of 20, right? What I have to do is
every time I'll be adding one new to this, right? So F has got 20 results and I can see the possible results are 3 and 4 only. Why not 5? Because range works minus 1 of the last. So if it is uh, like 5, then the results you will be possibly getting is only 3 and 4. But uh, let this be a case of random integer. We find things different. See, 5, 3, and 4 even. So in rand int, it basically gives you a random integer between some values. And the rand range, it takes a range of numbers. And then it gives you the result accordingly. Okay. All right. See if I give you a very cool example for that. It can be Sometimes you get something like this. This is your one time Google verification code, a pa uh, Facebook password reset code, something like that. Instagram, this and all, and all, something like that. You get somewhere OTPs. Everywhere you get OTPs. Now, these OTPs are being generated based on your particular, you can say, contents of your whatever it should be. Like if it is a bank, you get the OTP from the bank itself to change so that those things are predefined and that can contain bank numbers or anything right like that so for today uh, we are going to uh, do till the random right tomorrow we'll be going for the uh, all the classifiers and all of the things to end up quickly of the python basics and then our core structure I'm going to define you like we will be first dealing with the uh, SIMP, SIMP module. Then we will be going with the NumPy. Then we will be going with the Pandas. Then the Matplotlib. Then with the Seaborn. Okay. And uh, then with the scikit learn and at last we'll make models learning methods okay so this is the total conclusion of our session this is how we are going to study up from tomorrow okay